Hell yeah, dude, this game rips. Welcome back to another game here on Mummified Games. I'm Tony, and today we're not even going to bother with a funny intro bit because this game just hauls. It rocks, it's a visceral chunk of action. We're taking a look at the top-down shooter, Nuclear Throne by Vlambeer. Let's get into it. As I said, this game is the top-down shooter where you play as a host of different characters and try to make it to the end of the game, making it to the Nuclear Throne. On the way, you'll be teleported from level to level, making your way through different zones and going through waves of enemies, each zone having its own approach on different enemies. In the first zone, you face a lot of sandworm maggot things that when you kill them, they burst into 10 smaller maggots. You also face raider looking dudes covered in cloths that cover their faces. Another troubling enemy in this area is the giant scorpion that hisses at you, firing off a clump of shots that you obviously need to avoid. Speaking of dodging shots, this game requires a lot of careful moving. You start the game with a max HP of around 10, depending on the character. And when you die, it's back to the start. That's right, baby. It's a roguelike. We got another one here, folks. It's been a while since I talked about a roguelike. And boy, howdy, does this game feel like it does the genre justice. There are a ton of different things to unlock in this game. The game starts with just four heroes that you can play as. But as you get further and further into the game, you unlock more and more characters to play as. The game starts you off with the fish man, a crystal dude, and a melty guy. Did it start you with three or four characters? I can't remember if I unlocked to the eyeball character, and then after a while, unlocking the plant character as well. Each of these characters have different abilities, where the crystal has more starting max HP and can make a shield for a little bit. The fish can roll and get out of the way while getting more ammo and health drops. The game has an amazing level of character design. Each of the player characters feel unique, while the enemies are varied and different as well. The game feel in it is also spot on. The game has a great visceral feeling to it. The bullets feel like they have weight and the guns sound different different and unique. There's about 120 weapons BT dub. Speaking of things sounding great, the soundtrack by Jukio Kalio is so good. The sitar and the haunting vocals add to this idea of a post-civilization world that you're running and gunning your way through. And it's on Spotify. That's 34 more songs going into my lyricless song playlist. Come on now. While you're out and about mowing down enemies and moving from level to level, enemies drop vials of nuclear waste. And this is what acts as the XP. Get enough of it and you will level up and get a new mutation. You can pick from four at a time. Things like slower enemy shots, higher max HP, shots taken might also return as bullets, faster movement, tons of different mutations that your character can pick up and help them get farther in the game. I can't tell you how much fun this game is. It gives off big enter the gungeon vibes, vibes that are so strong, I had to double check who the developer was and what, if any, connections there were to Gungeon or Devolver Digital. The the closest thing I could find was that the developer of this game worked on another game with a developer that made Minute, and that was published by Devolver Digital. So the link is tenuous at best as to why this game feels like Dungeon. The game is another great one that I would love to try playing on the couch with a friend. The only complaint I have is that it's just a smidge too hard. The game kicks up the difficulty as it goes, keeping pace with the upgrades and favorite guns that you may keep or throw away. I keep dying at the part where the second boss shows up and it's already been a gamble to see if I make it that far. So to fall at the same level multiple times, it starts to wear you out. The game is incredibly fun to mess around in and I was well entertained by the end of the hour I gave to the review. I turned off the recording and kept playing it for a bit more just to really satisfy that itch. This is one of the few times that I wish I had this game on Steam and not just on itch. Anyway, go pick up this game on Steam. It's a great experience and I could not recommend it enough. For those of you who have played Nuclear Throne, what were your thoughts on it? Is there a character you played a lot? What was your favorite gun? I found the auto shotgun, woof. That took me places. If you haven't played this one, what is another top-down shooter like that that you've played and loved? I want you to tell me more about it. In the meantime, I was editing Web Games 4 last night and I was taking a look at the page for Pumpkin. I found out that there was an HD version of that game that you could download. If I have the time tonight, I might just go give that a try. Oh, and finally, a negative side effect of doing these videos has finally shown up. I'm starting to hate the sound of my own voice again. So that's cool. When I started doing podcasts back in the day, my voice sounded weird and foreign, but eventually it leveled out and I became used to the sound. Now, after doing these videos all the time, I don't like it again. Cool. 
What I do like is when you all do the YouTube dance. Like, sub, hit the bell, comment your thoughts, share and tell someone you know about these videos. It all helps a lot. And as always friends, keep digging. We'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.